In this video, I'm going to talk about the pencil tool in Tumble Hype 4. The pencil tool is a great way to add an organic feeling to your hype documents. It lets you draw directly on the scene, and you can start making your first pencil line just by selecting pencil from the elements toolbar here. So once you have that selected, your cursor changes to a pencil, and then you have an option to create an automatic line draw animation as you draw, and you also can adjust the smoothing of that line. So I'm going to set it to 6 here for smoothing and a line draw animation at triple speed. So what that does when I put the playhead to 0 is it automatically creates a very smooth line and it creates an animation as well. So I'm going to do that also here. So now we have two pencil drawings and they're actually vector shapes so you can double click on the shape and then modify it. And since our smoothing we set for that pencil line was uh, pretty high, we only have a few curves. So this is an extremely efficient way to add vector shapes to your document. When you create these shapes, you can use multiple line drawings in concert to create really complex animations. Each of these was a separate line. There's about 39 different uh, pencil drawings on the left. Or you can optionally create a single line drawing and you notice that the speed of the pencil drawing sort of increases as it keeps going. You also have options for a easing property for your line. Here we're using the ease in out, but you could very easily use the elastic or linear easing function to have the rate of the drawing go at a constant pace. So with these shapes, these are regular vector shapes, as I said in the last scene. And when you double click on it, you get access to all of the curves. So that means also that when you um, resize one of these vector shapes, you have really, really high detail um, vector graphics to work with. If you have access to a Wacom tablet, it's just a matter of clicking and holding on your pen, just like you would with a mouse, you know, left click and hold to create your individual pencil shapes. And it's great for animations like this with a signature. It's really useful for creating a vector shape uh, as a tracing. So I'm gonna select the pencil tool and just quickly draw around this Nefertiti head. I'm gonna set the border width to two and let's use a brighter color, maybe red. I'm going to set the opacity of the background color of this shape to be 50%. That will make it a little easier when I'm done with the tracing to see what's underneath and fine tune my tracing. So I don't need to be really perfect with these lines. I can always go in and modify my tracing later. But getting it rough is good enough. So since I had closed path when near line start selected, I have a background for this shape. So this has that gray background at 50% opacity, and that makes it really easy when I double click on it to modify the shape and any of the curves to get the uh, tracing a little more uh, perfect. And since I also, when I had the pencil tool selected, I had create line draw animation, we get for free a line draw animation at the same um, direction that I made my pencil drawing. And again, it uses that default ease in out, easing transition. You could definitely, you know, erase that and then just set the line draw setting to 100% if you don't want that line draw animation. And then we can get rid of the background and now we have our shape. When you have a vector shape with a border, resizing it does not change the thickness of the border. But if you wanted to increase that width of the border, 
in addition to scaling up the actual element itself, you could hold Command and instead scale the object. Now what this does is it increases the size of everything together, and you'll notice the stroke increases in width as well. So in this scene, I'm just going to go over all of the uh, minute details about how the pencil tool works. So the first thing to know is that you need to set your smoothing option before you make your drawing. You can always change the color, uh, the background fill style, or other options at any time, but the smoothing sort of takes into account your drawing um, shape at the time, and it smooths accordingly. If you set your smoothing to zero, you're going to get every little movement of the mouse. And when you select this pencil shape, you have thousands of points instead of for this shape, you know, maybe 10 or so. Another thing to know, you can switch from the standard line draw percentage to line dash here. And there's a lot of details in the documentation, but line dash essentially creates a dashed line. And if you want to close your path, connect the first point to the last point, you have a couple options. You can select the first and then select the last, and you see you have a little circle here, or you can press this button, close path. It's up to you. It's pretty easy to create straight lines with the pencil tool. Just hold shift and start drawing in either the horizontal or vertical direction. If you want to create diagonal lines, it's better to use the vector shape tool. You can just click once and then click again. And if you want to constrain your angles to 45 degrees, you'll just click once, hold shift, and click again. Now to switch between the pencil and vector tool, I'm just hitting P or V, but of course you can select in the elements button here vector shape or pencil. If you have P selected and you press P again, you get back to the mouse cursor where you can select objects. And now let's move on to closed shapes. So since I have by default closed path when new lines start selected, I can very quickly make simple shapes like a triangle or more complex shapes as long as I end near the beginning, it's going to close that shape and give me a background color. You can very easily move between a vector shape with curves to the pencil tool. While you are creating a vector shape, instead of creating a new point here, I'm going to press P. And that means that it will commit this last line, highlighted in red, and then from there continue on to be a drawn pencil line. And you can go the other way. If you have a pencil shape and you want to continue a vector from this point, it switches to vector mode automatically. So at this point now I can create vector curves and, of course, I can switch back to a pencil shape. When you create a pencil line and you then select it, if you were to draw another pencil line at this point, your cursor has a little X on it. And this means that drawing a pencil line now will clear this shape. So whenever you have a pencil line selected, you can immediately write over it just by drawing again. And this is kind of interesting for this next demo, shape morphing. So let's say I had a triangle that I want to morph into a circle. All I'm going to do is go to one second, hit record, and then I'm going to double click on the object. So now I have it selected. And I'm going to go back into pencil mode. So this cursor is telling me that Creating a pencil line at this point will overwrite the shape. But since I'm recording, we're going to create a path animation. So now all I do is draw a circle, 
and a path animation was generated for me. We can see it morphs from a triangle to a circle. So that's the pencil tool. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Once you get moving with the pencil tool, you can create amazing things like this, which is something Sebastian Aubrey submitted for a vector animation contest. You can check it out on our blog. And if you have any questions about the pencil tools you get going, let us know in the comments below. Thanks.